Hi everyone, Nick here, and today I got a question from my friend Amy over on Facebook, actually, on a video that I made a while ago about how to make lollipop charts from bar charts in Excel or PowerPoint. Um, there are many different ways to do it. There are a few ways that are easier than others, but her question was whether or not she could use that lollipop technique to visualize uh, survey responses, top two survey res uh, top two box survey responses on like a five point liquor type item. Um, but she wanted to show the percentage for each of the top two items uh, individually. So this would be like the four and five spot on the survey. I thought about it a couple different ways. Um, it's not exactly as easy as the original uh, bar chart to lollipop chart tutorial, uh, but I wanted to go over and show you a couple options. So the really, probably the best way to visualize this when you're looking at the top two is this traditional stacked bar, but you have to stylize it a little bit to make it look really good. Um, and you can see here we have the percentage of the, um, the four spot that would be people who said very. So like these are my items along the, along the side here, very safe, very welcoming, very beautiful. And then the orange bars are the extremely. So what we wanna do is a couple of different things to stylize the chart. We want to sort the bars in an intentional order, makes it easier for your reader to understand what the highest and the lowest pieces of, of data are. So what we did is we just calculated the sum of very and extremely, and then we sorted those greatest to least. So we can see that uh, people rated safety very high and people rated value or valuable lower, uh, relatively speaking. The other thing that we did is we uh, decreased the gap width on these bars. So Excel always defaults to 150%. That's the space between the bars. We want to de decrease that. And I like to put down here to about 30% so that the bars are nice and chunky. There's not as much white space in between them. And then we directly labeled each of these sections here. So we don't have to have grid lines or an axis. Uh, label for that. And then also we have this other feature here where we have the calculation for the top two box response on the end. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So that's probably the easiest way to visualize this, Amy. Um, the other way that we, we can use that lollipop technique, but it's not quite as simple and there are some, some limitations. So we can't really label um, in this way, in the way that we did it uh, in that video that you commented on, we can't really label each of the dots like this. Um, but we can keep the x-axis right here, so that's labeled, and then you can have the dot indicating the very or the number four spot and the dot indicating the extremely spot. Now you'll also notice that there's this like gradient shading color here. We have to do that because if we don't do that, I'm going to go ahead and um, change this color right here. I'm just going to change it to a solid orange. If we do that, then it automatically has this little overlapping line here. The error bar for this bar goes into that dot and we can't really swap them um, in this technique. So I thought it might be interesting to sort of add that little color gradient and also is kind of engaging. It's an engaging look for your reader, I think. So that's just, uh, we, we just recolor that um, to the gradient line here. I get rid of two of the stops. We set it to this linear option right here. And then this initial, this white end here, we would make into that same blue that the dot, the, the very dots are. And then on the end, whatever color we would want here, we can just put that to the orange. So I thought that was kind of a cool technique that you could use too. Now, the other way that you might want to, you might be able to do this is through uh, a dot plot. We have other videos on how to make those dot plots where you can actually label each of the dots. And then you could probably set the error bars to go down to that Y axis over there on the side. Um, but that's going to be a little bit more heavy lifting on the back end and it's kind of created from a base uh, scatter plot and then you work with that. So you should ask your colleague, Erin, she knows how to make those dot plots because she has commented on my dot plots before. So I hope that you both watch that. But I want to go down here and I'm just going to show you quickly how I made each of these. So these are my survey data. Here are my items, one, two, three, four, five, the not at all through extremely stops. I'm going to do a couple of calculations here just while we while we're here on the spreadsheet. So this is going to be my sum of the top two box. I'm just going to label that top two box equals sum, and then I'm going to uh, drag that down, and then we'll just drag that formula down. So this is the sum of the top two box here. Excel always gives me those little error carrots, but it's not an error, so we're just going to keep that. And then over here, I'm just going to um, add a, a real label here. I'm going to say top two box percent. And this is actually where my labels are going to be pulling from in my in my stacked bar chart. 
So here I'm just going to put 15% and then drag 15% all the way down. You'll see why we do that in a second. So I'm going to keep these two and I'm just going to gray them out a little bit so that we know that they're not our actual survey data. These are our created variables. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to highlight this uh, column right here, my items, with that top, uh, the top row uh, highlighted as well. Push down Control, and then I'm going to highlight very extremely and then all the way down so that just those three are selected. Now we'll go up and we'll insert a chart. We'll insert the stacked bar chart. We don't want to do 100% stacked bar. We want to do the regular stacked bar, which is in the middle here. So we're going to do it just like that. And we'll drag it down. So now we have our chart right here. It's pretty perfect. Um, let's see. I'm going to go this way. What I'm going to do is a couple little tweaks here. I'm going to take click on the legend. We're going to put that up to the top. Um, we're going to, I'm actually, in this case, I'm just going to get rid of my title. Most of the time, I'm going to paste this into PowerPoint or paste it into Word, and I have a, a title in those documents already, so we don't need them in the chart. It's redundant. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and reduce the gap width. Just highlight any of the bars over here in the Format Data Series menu. You see it's set to 150%. Let's just go down to 30%. Makes them nice and chunky. I'm going to click on the x-axis. We don't need that anymore because we're going to directly label these. The same thing with the grid lines. We're going to take those away. Now I want to actually make this a little bit more accessible and have white lines, right, white borders around each of my chunks. So I'm going to go to the paint bucket menu over here, solid line, and then set that to white. And the same thing with my orange bars. We're going to say solid line to white. And now you see these nice white lines between the bars. We don't need a chart border, so I'm going to click on that and I'm going to say no line around the border. It looks much nicer to just sort of have this floating effect there. We don't need to have our eyes go to that line, that border line around the charts. And then what we're going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of this x-axis line as, or the y-axis line as well. We don't need that. That's another example of sort of visual clutter that we want to decrease. Um, okay, so now let's go ahead and add labels. Right-click, add the labels. We're going to make this white. And now for stacked bars, they always default to be in the center of the bar. But since in this case for the stacked bar, since our values are going from left to right, I want those, I want the um, data labels in the bars to be as close to the end of each of the bars as possible. So we're going to play with the positioning of this. So with your axis or with those data labels selected, go over to that bar chart icon in the format data label menu. And right now you can see the label position, it's set to center. We're going to say inside end, and then it goes out that way. And I like that much better. We'll do the same thing for our extremely bars here. We're going to turn these white. And then we're going to go down, inside end. Perfect. All right. Now, remember, we need to have, now we need to have that calculated field. So what, uh, for the top two box percentages, so they can live outside of these bars and tell our reader that this is the cumulative percentage and then these are the individual percentages of each of those top two box. So what I'm going to do is go, go back to up my calculated field here. I'm not going to highlight the top two box percentage. I'm going to highlight the calculated 15% column that we did that says top two box percent. I'm just going to highlight the whole thing push control C to copy, and I'm going to paste this inside the chart. So click on the chart and then control V to paste. And now you can see it added that series of data to our chart. It's really a dummy series of data. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and uh, insert data labels here. It's 15%. Now click on these data labels and over on the data value, the data label menu, on that bar chart icon, click on label options. And right now it's set to value. We want to unselect value and select value from cells. And then it's going to ask us where do we want to pull the data label values from. And we want to do that from the top two box uh, percentage calculated column that we did up here with sum. So I'm going to go ahead and just highlight those cells that I want, push OK. And now you see we have these beautiful labels here. Now I'm going to go ahead and say no fill to the bars because we don't need that bar there. And then you can see also in the legend, the that gray uh, color goes away, which is good for us. And I'm just going to go ahead and stylize these a little bit more. I don't want um, them to be totally um, uh, really uh, uh, stand out in the chart. I want them to kind of fade into the background. So I'm going to make them a little lighter gray. I'm going to do the same thing with the legend. One of the things that I'm not sure a lot of people know is that you can kind of format the legend a little bit. So I'm going to click on the whole legend. I'm going to increase the font size there. I'm going to go ahead and just drag this out. You can't really position each thing individually, but if you want to keep the legend, this is a kind of a nice way to do it. Um, I always like to color the labels, uh, the response options up here, the same color of the bars. So all you have to do is isolate that very part. Just click again on that part in the legend and then go up here to 
uh, color the font just like you normally would. Same thing with the extremely here. We'll make that nice and orange, bold. And then over here, we will make this that lighter gray color. And then we'll make that bold as well. So that's a really nice way, I think, to do this. We'll make the labels, the data labels bold too, if you want to. So that's a really nice way to visualize these top two box survey response items. Now, another way we could think about doing that, let's go back and try to make this lollipop, okay? So what I'm gonna actually do is we're just gonna keep the stacked bar that we made, um, but I'm going to get rid of, let's see, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger here. And for now, I'm gonna get rid of the top two box percentages because I'm not sure. Well, actually, I don't know. Let's just keep it and see what happens. Uh, I'm not sure that we're gonna need it, um, but maybe we will. Let's just see what happens. So I'm gonna keep on keep the stacked bar option. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of the labels and I'll show you what it looks like with labels at the end of this. So now we just need to add those error bars. So click on the one series of uh, data right here, the very. We're gonna go up to the little skittle right here, this little plus sign and click on error bars. Now you see the error bars pop up right here. Now we need to do a little bit of formatting here. So I'm gonna click on the error bars, go over to the error bar menu. We're gonna say minus, and then we're gonna say no cap. And then we're gonna click on percentage here and say 100%. And that's gonna put the error bar all the way down to that Y axis. Now what I'm gonna do is one by one, I'm going to, um, well actually no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, select no fill on all, of the, on all of those bars. You can see that once you do that to no fill, then the legend does not update to that, uh, or the legend updates to that. So there's no fill now on the legend, but we'll take care of that uh, kind of manually at the end here. So I'm gonna click back on these error bars. We're gonna color them blue. Let's go ahead and increase the weight size. It's defaulted to 0.75 points, but let's go all the way up to three points. And then down here on the begin arrow type, we're gonna select the circle. And then you can see there's our first uh, set of dots right there. Let's do this again for this series of bars too. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the little skittle right here. Click on error bars, the error bars pop up. The same amount of formatting we have to do to the error bars. So minus, no cap, and then percentage will go down to 100%. And you can see that now goes down. It's actually probably going all the way, potentially in the background. I'm not exactly sure if we deleted that. I'll have to play with that uh, later on. But let's go ahead and then color that orange. Click on the begin arrow type and we'll say circle. And then let's increase the weight size to three points. Now we're gonna go ahead and click anywhere on those bars and get rid of the fill color. So say no fill. And now we have these two dots. Now I've kept that uh, top two box percentage on the end. I don't know, I kind of like it. Maybe uh, you'll want to keep that there. Now let's go ahead and do that gradient fill if you don't like that overlapping um, error bar on the blue dots here. So click on those error bars, just the orange ones. Go back to the paint bucket and then we're going to select gradient line. And it de always defaults to four gradient stops, but we're gonna get rid of them. So all you have to do is just click on one, the middle ones and drag them out and then they're gone. And then under the direction menu, we will select this linear one up here where it goes really white on the left and really blue on the right. So we're gonna click on that and then we're gonna update the colors here. So that left color will be blue, the right color will be orange. Now this doesn't mean too much for us. It does because we have the top two box percentages labeled. So you could actually just keep it like this if you wanted to. Now, if you clicked on these bars and inserted labels, you can see here, it's not really gonna look that great because they're stacked bars. Even if you put them inside end, they go right be before the bars and you can't really see them. If you wanted to sort of brute force and really just drag them each individually up, you could do that and maybe that will be worth uh, the effort. The juice will be worth the squeeze in that case. Um, but the other thing that you can do is just um, add the add the um, the axis back. So click on the little skittle here, click on axes, this axis menu here. We're gonna say primary horizontal. And now that's back. Now you can see it's 120%. We're actually just gonna go, it's because uh, we have that extra dummy source of data there. So I'm just gonna put this down to uh, the maximum to one. And that gives us 100% uh, there and even our top two box uh, are still there if we wanted to get rid of them we could just go ahead and delete them let's go ahead and add 
some grid lines in this case because we have no data labels directly on the chart. So we'll go ahead and say pr uh, primary vertical. Um, and then the thing that I do like to do is just make sure that these are really light gray. And then it looks like it's uh, dotted lines here, but I wanna make sure that they're solid. Hmm. I wonder why, do you see that dotted line there? I wonder why these are all set to dotted lines. Really interesting. Oh, it's because I have white borders around those stacks. Those stacks. So if you wanted to do this lollipop, you have to get rid of those white borders. So just say no border on each of those stacks. And now you can see the grid lines are solid. So that's pretty nice. And then I might make this a darker color just for the items. And if you wanted to play around with some of the sizing, the plot area, things like that. For the legend, so since the legend is kind of gone for us right now, what I might just do here in this case is just kind of brute force, insert a couple circles, make sure that they're colored exactly the way that you that they show up in the chart, and then just kind of make this pretty tiny, and then drag it right over. I'm gonna push Control D to duplicate it. And then we'll color that orange. And then we actually don't need the top two box anymore because we don't have that option there. Oh, now that kind of messes with the size of the legend. So then you would just want to sort of drag it, position it as you want it. The other way to do that is just get rid of the legend altogether, which is what I would normally do. And then kind of make your own custom legend at the top with these text boxes and shapes. I'm going to uh, click both of them and then make sure that they're aligned to the middle perfectly. So with your alignment tools right there. And then if you wanted with those two uh, circles selected, hold down shift, hold down the chart, and then right click and click on group. And then that makes this one chart that you can use, um, that you can paste into PowerPoint or, where, or Word, whatever um, you're recording. So that was a lengthy process, but we have two options for you. I think the first one's probably easier. The second one might be a little bit more visually engaging and you might get some oohs and ahs from your crowd, uh, but go ahead and play around, give it a little try. And again, remember, ask Erin for some help because um, she watches my videos and she's a very good viewer over on Twitter. So I'll see you guys later. I had a great time making this for you. And if anyone else out there is watching, I hope that you will like this video. Click the subscribe button and then click the bell next to it. You'll get notified every time I post a new video in data design, usually PowerPoint, Excel, or Word. I had a great time making it for you and I will see you all next time.